Hey everybody. So today we're going to start chapter 14, which is actually going to be the last chapter we cover this semester. And so we've spent the last several chapters really digging deep into aggregate demand, how we can get aggregate demand from both the goods market and the money market, from both IS and LM. So we're going to finish the semester by taking a look at aggregate supply. And so, so far, we've assumed that the price level is completely fixed in the short run, that P is stuck at some previously determined level in the short run, and so we have a horizontal short run aggregate supply curve. And so we're going to break this down into two different theories, two different models for short run prices. The first one is the sticky price model. The second one is the imperfect information model where firms might not know as much about the economy as we really want them to. Now, importantly, both of these models are going to imply the same short run aggregate supply curve. It's going to imply that if prices are above expected price, if P is greater than P bar, then we can have output above potential. At the same time, output is always going to be fairly close to potential because potential output is a function, is within this function for short run aggregate supply. So in this model, output Y and the price level P are gonna be positively related. And so we're actually gonna have an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve in both of these models. So in this video, we're focusing primarily on the sticky price model. And we've talked several times about the reasons for sticky prices. A firm might be stuck into a long-term contract where they can't change prices without breaking the contract. A firm might not want to bear the menu costs. They might not want to have to print new menus or go around putting new price tags. And it also might just be bad will for a firm to change prices. It might bother their customers and customers might go elsewhere. Customers don't really like it when firms are constantly changing prices. And so we're going to have, all of, in all three of these cases, the same basic assumption that a firm can set their own price, that they're essentially a monopoly. And so they can increase and decrease their prices at will. And so an individual firm would like to set their price level P star as a function of the total price level in the economy P, and then the deviation of output from potential. So if output is really, really high, then in, in an ideal world, firms would raise their prices. If output is really, really low, in an ideal world, a firm would lower its price. And in this model, we're going to assume that there are two different kinds of firms. There are firms with flexible prices that can set their price however they see fit, and so they're always going to set their price to this desired price, P star. But on the other side, we're also going to assume that there are some firms with sticky prices a firm like a grocery store or something like that. And they have to set their prices according to different expectations of what the price level in the economy is going to be and what total output is going to be. And so we can think of a firm with a flexible price as something like a gas station. They can easily change prices and respond to different forces in the economy, the price level and output. But a supermarket has to set prices beforehand. And so they have to derive expectations for what the price level throughout the economy is and what output will be when they set their desired price P star. And so for simplicity, we're gonna assume that a sticky price firm will always set output, assuming, uh, will always set their price, assuming output is equal to the natural rate, assuming that EY is always equal to EY bar. So in that case, it's EY minus EY bar will fall out and they'll set their desired price P star just in line with what they think the price level in the entire economy is gonna be. And so we can take this information and the information on the last slide and combine that to get an aggregate price level for the entire economy. We have to know first that some fraction of firms S have to have sticky prices. And then the other half of that one minus S are firms with flexible prices, firms that can change in response to different economic conditions. And so the expected price for the entire economy is realistically just the average of the price set by sticky price firms and the price set by flexible price firms. 
And so the overall price level P is just the percentage of firms with sticky prices, S, times the price set by sticky price firms, EP. It's also the price set by flexible price firms times the percentage of firms with flexible prices. Again, it's just a weighted average of the prices in the economy. And so if we have a lot of firms with sticky prices, if S is very, very high, then P and EP are gonna be very similar. If a lot, of, a lot of firms have flexible prices, then a lot of firms can respond to different output changes. And so we can take this and we can derive the total price level in the economy by simply solving for P. Now remember, EP is not something for which we're gonna solve. EP is a variable by itself. It's the expected price level. And so if we simply solve this expression for P, we subtract one minus S from both sides and divide both sides by S, to give us that the price level is gonna be the expected price level times this coefficient times output minus potential output. So if expected prices are very high, it's gonna drive up the price level. If output is very high, that's also gonna drive up the price level. And so it's just the sum of expected prices and the deviation of output from potential times this coefficient. And so from this, we can see a few different things. We can see that when the expectation for price is really, really high, that's gonna feed on itself and increase prices. Basically, if a sticky price firm thinks that prices are gonna be really, really high, they're gonna set high prices. And when they set high prices, that drives up the price level for the entire economy. So high expected prices feeds on itself into high actual prices. But at the same time, high output can also lead to high prices. And so a flexible price firm can respond to high output by changing their price, therefore driving up the entire price level in the economy. And so if Y is really, really high, and we have a lot of flexible price firms, that can lead to really high price levels throughout the entire economy. And all of this is gonna depend on the fraction of firms with sticky prices, S. And so the more firms we have with sticky prices, the closer the price level for the entire economy is going to be to the expected price. The more flexible price firms, the more firms can respond to changes in output, or that Y minus Y bar. And so we can take this expression for price and derive that aggregate supply equation that we saw previously. All we have to do is solve for the output Y. Solving for the output Y gives us exactly that same aggregate supply equation where Y is related to potential output and changes in price from expectation. And so instead of writing this whole mess where we have S and one minus S and alpha and A, we're just gonna say that total output is related to changes in expectations of the price level by this alpha coefficient. And within that, we're gonna include how many firms have sticky prices, S, and how many firms have flexible prices, one minus S. But in this, we can see how we got from the expression for prices straight to an aggregate supply equation that's going to be upward sloping. Higher prices are going to lead to higher output in this model.